Hello everyone, welcome to the video and to the channel. My name is Steven and I am a second year dental student. And today I am talking about a very, very important topic, which is how to pay for dental school. Now the issue of paying for dental school is so important and so pertinent for so many people that it actually is oftentimes a deciding factor for young students who are picking between dentistry and some other field. The cost of attendance of dental schools is ever rising as is the same case in medical schools. And so the question of how do we pay all of this money for our education seems to be more and more important as we move forward. So today I wanna to talk about this topic of paying for dental school. And I wanna start with a little bit of a disclaimer. I am by no means an expert on either dental school or finances. So take all this with a grain of salt, but I do have something very, very important that is informing me that I will use to inform you. So hopefully this video is helpful to you. And if it is, let me know in the comments, let me know what you think down below and also give the video a like and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more about dental school and the process of becoming a dentist in general. So let's go ahead and get right into to it, I'm going to be referencing this book, which is Dr. James Dolly's The White Coat Investor's Guide for Students. It is a wonderful, wonderful book that covers basically the entire financial outlook of the health professions in general. So Dr. Dolly himself is a physician. He's also super, super into finances and founded The White Coat Investor, which is a giant guide on how to make money and be a doctor. So I'm gonna be using this book and specifically the fourth chapter of this book to talk through this topic of paying for dental school. I'll give you some of my personal opinions and I'll really kind of divulge the information that's in here to you because a lot of it is very important and should be very helpful. So thank you to Dr. Dolly and the folks at White Coat Investor for helping me out with this video and I hope you learned something. The first option for how to pay for dental school is interestingly, pay cash. So you might be thinking right off the bat, this one is immediately off the table for me. Uh, neither myself nor my family have the kind of money that is needed to pay roughly $300,000 to go to dental school. And that's gonna be the case for a lot of people, but Dr. Dolly makes it clear that investing in yourself and your future income is one of the best uses of your money. So if there is absolutely any money lying around for education purposes or any money lying around for really anything uh, for you or your family, you should invest it in your education if dentistry is for you. Now, most all of us are going to be taking out student loans, which I'll talk about in a second. But even if you're taking out student loans, you can mix the student loans that you take from the government and mix those in with cash that you or your family may have. Whether it comes from your parents, your grandparents, a rich uncle, somebody who has some sort of account uh, open for you for some education money, you or your siblings, that's money that you can use alongside your student loans. So you're not likely to have all of the money that you need to pay for dental school upfront in cash, but if you have a little bit of it, you can combine that money with the student loans that you can get from the government. And specifically on this point, you should borrow up to the maximum federal direct student loan amount that you need, and then use your cash for any expenses above and beyond that amount until it runs out. So when are you going to be using this cash? Ideally, you'll be using it early in your dental education. Basically, you wanna use the cash that you have early before the interest starts accruing on your dental school loans. And the main goal is to start your career with all of your cash spent, with the minimum amount of loans, and with the most attractive loan terms possible. One additional note on this topic is that if you have an IRA, either traditional or Roth or a 401k, Dr. Dolly recommends that you, generally speaking, don't want to tap into these accounts to pay for dental school. And the reason for this is that uh, some of these accounts, like a Roth IRA, for example, are uh, a tax protected retirement account. And the money in those accounts is generally going to be building on itself, either through interest or if it's in the market, uh, through the market earnings. So generally speaking, try not to touch this money, uh, but he does talk a little bit more about a 401k specifically and how you can use that. So you'll have to get the book. Student loans. So basically 75% or three quarters of dental students are going to come out of school with some sort of student loans. It's almost impossible to avoid them. We're pretty much all gonna have them. And that's just the reality of our profession. But on the bright side, frugal living for the first two to five years of your career as a practicing dentist can really, really do major things in this process of repaying on the loans. It's specifically frugal living for two to five years can actually help you pay off your debt in around five years. For example, if you have $500,000 in student debt for dental school, which most of us won't have that much, but if you have that much, half a million dollars in debt, you can pay $10,000 a month 
and you'll have all of that debt paid off in half of a decade. So five years for $500,000. That of course means you're gonna have to be living frugally. You're gonna be having to live like a student as Dr. Dolly often talks about, but this is something that's very doable. And, and considering the fact that most of us will have less than 300 in debt, this seems very reasonable. Dr. Dolly recommends to live like a resident and also consider refinancing your loans. That way more of the money that you're spending is going towards the principal of the loan rather than the interest that is accruing on the loan itself. The third option for paying for dental school is to get a discount. Now there are plenty of examples of these discounts that exist out there. And this one's gonna have to take some research on your part, uh, depending on where you're wanting to go to school geographically. The example that Dr. Dolly uses in the book is I'll call it the whammy discount. I don't know if they actually call it that in these states, but there are basically five states up near Washington where students from these states can get in-state tuition at the University of Washington. Uh, a similar deal is seen at my school at the University of Tennessee where Arkansans, people from the state of Arkansas, can get in-state tuition in the state of Tennessee. There's a bunch of examples of this. Just do your research and figure out which state you're in. Typically, if your state isn't represented with its own dental school, there's going to be a nearby state where you can get in-state tuition. And as I've mentioned many times in the past, in-state tuition is massive. Uh, you Usually the surcharges for out-of-state students are around 40 grand in my experience. So that's definitely something that you want to try to avoid paying if you can. So in-state tuition or a discount on something like this is massive. The next option for paying for dental school is a big one. And this is the military HPSP or the military health professions scholarship program. You may have heard about this if you visited some dental schools or talked to some people who uh, work at dental schools or are involved there, but basically the military, the armed forces, they basically have these programs that allow students to serve time in the military but also have their school paid for. It's more of a contract than a scholarship is kind of the best way to describe it. But basically tuition fees and expenses are paid for and you also get a monthly stipend of around $2,000. So this can be very, very attractive for students if going into the military is something that you can see yourself doing. Uh, this is a great option for you. One additional note for graduating dental students is that if you're going this military HPSP route, you're going to be expected to apply to a one-year AEGD or Advanced Education and General Dentistry uh, residency program. And if you're accepted to one of these programs, you're expected to attend. So that adds a year onto this formula of time that you're putting in. But basically to explain this a little bit better, for every year that the military pays for your school, that's tuition, expenses, and everything else that you're going to, to need as well as this monthly stipend. For every year that you get that payment, you're going to give a year back to the military serving in one of the armed forces. So it's a one for one deal. And for a lot of folks, this is a great option. Dr. Dolly himself actually paid for his stint in medical school with a military HPSP. So he said it was wonderful. If this is something that you might do or might think to do, Maybe you have someone in the military in your family. Uh, talk to the recruiter that is responsible for your school or the school that you're wanting to go to, and you could see if this program is for you. Financial assistances programs, there are gonna be plenty of examples of this as well, uh, but a common one also has to do with the military, and that is the Military Financial Assistance Program. Basically, this is designed for dental and medical residents, so postgraduate dental students essentially who are in their residency programs, and these students are gonna receive I think it's around $45,000 per year, plus that $2,000 a month stipend uh, for this uh, service contract. The commitment for this program is two years of active duty for the first year of participation and one year for every additional year. That's another military option to help you pay for school. And it sounds like a pretty good one, especially if you're going to be a resident of some sort. The National Health Service Corps is very similar to the military HPSP. It's going to be commitment of time and services for the money and tuition payments. But basically the difference is two years of commitment for one year of payment. Basically you're going to perform your dental services in a designated health professional shortage area. And what this means is that you're probably going to be going somewhere rural, uh, somewhere that has very few active uh, professionals like doctors and dentists. Common examples of these areas are community health centers, state penitentiaries, 
and mental institutions. The final option for paying for dental school that I wanted to talk about is public service loan forgiveness. Dr. Dolly writes, under this program, a student who makes 120 on-time monthly payments on qualifying federal direct loans through a qualifying program, such as the Federal Income Driven Repayment Program, while working full-time for a qualifying federal, state, or nonprofit 501c3 employer will have any remaining debt forgiven tax-free. This is something that you will kind of need a mentor to talk you through. Uh, basically, what it sounds like is that essentially you need to find an area that is one of these designated places, uh, the 501c3, um, which is all, I believe, IRS related. And if you are gonna be able to work in one of these areas and make these monthly on-time payments, essentially all of the extra money that you haven't paid after those payments is going to be completely wiped off the board tax-free, which is pretty incredible. So folks, I am not an expert on all of these payment options, but Dr. Dolly is, and if you want to read this book, once again, it's the White Coat Investor's Guide for students, and it's absolutely incredible. There's plenty more information other than just paying for school that's found in this book, so make sure you check that out. But hopefully this was helpful. It gave you an idea. It gave you something to start thinking about if you're a younger student who is kind of already juggling this question of, do I even want to become a dentist? Because I know I'm going to go into plenty of debt to do it. I will say, because I know there's going to be a few people who are interested, I am sort of paying for dental school with a variety of these different things that I've just talked about. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about it, but basically I, like the rest of us, am going to have plenty of loans to pay back when I get out. And that process of paying back those loans is something that I look forward to talking about when I do get out and I start making money and I'm able to just go into a little bit more detail about all this stuff. But don't let the expense of dental school deter you from becoming a dentist. This is something that Dr. Dolly also harps on. Uh, people like Dave Ramsey are gonna say that becoming a dentist is a bad investment because there's such a high initial payment that you have to go through in order to even get into the profession. But I promise you, if you follow one of these routes and if you're very, very smart and frugal in the first two to five years of your time as a practicing dentist, you will get out of all of this debt free and you'll be able to live your life very, very financially comfortable. So that is it for this video. Once again, if you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments and remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more. My name is Steven once again, and this one was fun to make, albeit very difficult to go through all of that information for me, but hopefully I did a decent job at it. I appreciate all of you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As I always say at the end of these things, I'll see you in the next one.